So guys, um, we just wanted to do this um, just to connect with the outside world and um, chat a, a bit about all things worship. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Hi Michelle, nice to have you with us. Yeah, Pastor Yap is saying he didn't see any rain. He sees a pool. There is a swimming pool, but it's starting to drizzle outside today. So, and that is not fun in lockdown. Um, yeah, I would actually love to hear from you guys. What has been keeping you sane during this lockdown period? I have never cooked so much in my life. I've never baked so much in my life. Um, I have been doing so much laundry, so that's always fun. But, um... Yeah, Jonathan, Netherlands, hi, so good to have you with us. Byron, our bass players just joined, hi guys. Awesome. Yeah, so we're going to be chatting about um, some good stuff today. Obviously, during lockdown, it's been different for everybody. I think a lot of people have been going through some different stuff. Um, some people are absolutely loving it. I think some people are really just struggling with a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, um, just because it's such an unsure time for us. Um, so I think that it's going to be good today just to hear your comments and um, just to see, you know, how everybody's doing. And the topic of today actually is worship and warfare because um, God has actually given us tools um, to overcome the fear, to overcome the anxiety. And the biggest thing um, is that he actually foresaw this time. He knew that we would be in lockdown. He knew that we would be um, in our homes, stuck in our homes. Okay, this is for Pastor Yarp. I'm going to my window so that you can see that it is actually pouring down with rain here in South Africa. Johannesburg, here it is. Beautiful rain. And um, we all know what that signifies. It means blessing. So I just, um, I receive that this is a blessing over this conversation today. So yeah, our pastors are online. Welcome, Pastor Josh, Pastor Tara. It's so good to have you on our worship chat. Awesome. We're just so excited to just chat through a few things um, to do with worship. Obviously, it is my absolute... Obviously, it's my absolute passion. Um, it's what I've done my whole life. And I just wanted to share um, some nuggets with you today, just around the topic of worship and how God has given us that as a weapon um, when we face uncertainty, uncertain times. And to actually just say that it was the reason that we have been created. It's our most natural state of being, and that is worship. Um, and when I say worship, um, I mean, you don't have to be a singer, you don't have to be a musician. Worship is something that we get to do that God has given us. We place him as Lord of our lives, basically. Worship is placing God above circumstances, above feelings, above emotions, um, above how you're feeling in the moment. So, um, that's kind of just what we wanted to share around today. You know, we've been just saying during this um, lockdown that there's no distance in the spirit. And I think that this is so important that we just connect with each other. Um, you know, even though we're in our homes, it's quite significant, you know, that it's Passover time. That the Israelites, in Jesus' days, the Israelites, and Passover means... Um, the death and the resurrection of our Lord and Saviour, and the Israelites were in their homes in Egypt, in captivity, but the Lord had prepared a way out for them. And I believe that that's what he's doing in our homes, that he's preparing a way out for us. He's preparing us in this lockdown. And um, so I'm not an expert on worship, but I do know... Um, what worship looks like under grace and I'm just passionate about revealing Jesus and what he has for us so um, I actually just wanted to share a little bit of a testimony um, when this lockdown first began 
I, I was feeling quite unsure. I was feeling quite um, just unsettled in my heart and actually a little bit anxious, as I'm sure many of you were. Um, and I actually, I felt bad about feeling bad because, you know, um, I, I was feeling like I was so unspiritual, like I should be full of faith. I should be, you know, um, just really trusting God. And, um, and it was actually like really difficult for me, you know, I think that it was, I was totally, totally engrossed in just my feelings, you know, and I was actually feeling like really bad about it. Um, because I'm a pastor, I'm a worship leader, I'm meant to be full of faith, I'm meant to be strong. And so, you know, I was just going about actually funny enough doing the laundry. Yay for the laundry, us women online. Um, give me a thumbs up if you've been doing a lot of laundry. But it's all good. Um, it's loving on our families, isn't it? Um, so I was, I was going about my laundry and I just felt the Holy Spirit say to me, it's faith that pleases me. It's not how you feel. It's not circumstantial. It's actually faith that pleases me. And I think that um, so often we get so caught up in our circumstances. We get so caught up in um, our, our feelings. We live in our emotions. And it's not that I wasn't spiritual. It's, it's not that I wasn't being any less full of faith. It was just that my attention was on the wrong thing. My focus was on my feelings and how I felt about this lockdown and what's going to happen. What does it mean for my children? What does it mean for schooling? What does it mean for our work? What does it mean for our church? And the Holy Spirit just gently said to me, it's faith that pleases me. And so I feel like in this last couple of weeks of lockdown, I have really been exercising my faith and um, I would just be speaking in the spirit, speaking in tongues, and building myself up. And um, it actually got me thinking that that actually is worship. Faith and putting your faith and your trust in the Lord is actually worship. It's got nothing to do, or should I say, um, that it's not only about music. Worship is not only about music. It is about making him Lord of our lives in every moment, in the moments where we're fearing, in the moments where we are um, full of doubt and fear and worry and anxious. Um, it's, putting, it's making him Lord of our lives. So that could look like just saying the name of Jesus. That could be singing out a song if you're worshipers. That could be um, quoting a scripture. That is worship because he created us to worship. God created us, our most natural state of being as human beings, because we are spirit beings, is worship, the posture of worship. So it's about the state of your heart. It's about the posture of your heart. It's not just about living in the circumstances and being full of fear and thinking, oh my goodness, I'm so unspiritual right now. It's not, it's faith. It's stepping into the realm of faith. It's actually going, God, even though I feel a certain way, I choose to stand on your word. The word is what is going to get us through this time. Not our feelings, not our emotions. And that is what the Bible describes as worship, is placing God higher than our feelings, higher than the circumstances, higher than anything else that we might be going through. Putting him back in the place of Lord. The Hebrew word for Lord is Adonai. Adonai, it means that he is above. He is master. So I just want to encourage you guys that are watching that have been struggling with feelings of fear, being unsure during this lockdown season. I know that all of our countries that are watching are going through absolute chaos and unrest. And the more we watch the news, the more we put our minds on that stuff, the more fearful and anxious and worried we can get. But I believe that when you start to worship, when you start to sing out a song, when you start to stand on the word, when you speak, out the word God is enthroned in that and we put him as Lord of our lives this is what it means to put warfare as worship this is warfare going on and what what happens when we um, begin to worship is that 
when we worship, we are surrounded by his presence. We're surrounded by the presence of the Lord when we begin to worship, when we speak his word, when we stand on his word, when we begin to sing. If you're a musician, when you just begin to play unto the Lord. And you know what happens is, um, when we begin to worship, it puts God in control of everything, our circumstance in that moment. When we worship, we step into a realm outside of our natural ability. We step into the supernatural. When we begin to worship, we step into the supernatural. We step outside of the realm of the natural. And you know what happens is God fights for us. Because the battle is his, amen? And when we worship, it puts him in control. And I just want to remind you that worship is not about singing. Worship is not about playing an instrument. Worship is about putting God at the top of your priority. God as Lord of your life, Adonai. Um, so I just want to encourage you during this time that if you're feeling fearful, if you're feeling full of worry and anxiety, just begin to worship him. Sing out a line of a song. Sing out a scripture. Speak out a scripture. Because it's placing him as Lord in that moment. I actually just wanted to read a scripture to us. And I just want to I welcome you guys if you have just joined us. We're talking on the topic of worship today, and um, I have grown up, and I know that God's hand on my life and uh, calling on my life, if I look back, has always been in the area of worship, and I think the one thing that I've come to know is that worship is not just about the music. Worship is far greater than that. Worship is not for the elite that have a calling to worship lead on their lives or play on stage Worship is our most natural, natural state of being. And God has given us worship to connect us to him in times like these. So if you are feeling fearful, if you're feeling worried, if you're feeling in stress, I want to just encourage you to just lift up worship to him. And worship is standing on the word. Worship is standing on this word. It is getting into the word. And this is what is going to carry us through this time, guys. I really believe that with all of my heart. I just wanted to read this amazing scripture from Psalm 18, and it's from the Passion Translation. Um, give me a thumbs up if you love the word. I love the word of God, and I pray that we get more into the word of God, because it is going to be our shield and our sword during this time. And actually, while I'm, while I'm talking here, I'm actually, I can actually feel the presence of the Lord so strong. Just thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for every single person that is tuned into this. Father, that we would become aware of your presence that is surrounding us. In every home, in every room. In Jesus' name. I just wanted to read this from the word today. It's from Psalm 18, verse 34. And it says, You've trained me with the weapons of warfare worship. You've trained me. You've trained us with weapons of warfare. God himself has put in inside of us the ability to worship. And worship is warfare. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. And the way that we resist him is when we lift up the name of Jesus. It says, you've trained me with the weapons of warfare worship. And now I will ascend into battle with power to chase and conquer every foe. You, Lord, empower me for victory with your wraparound presence. He's given us victory, church. He's given us victory, family, because of his presence. His presence has already gone before us and given us victory. Given us victory in this time. 
So as you lift up your worship wherever you are, know that his presence in that moment wraps around you and he gives you victory. He fights for us. The battle is the Lord. And there's another scripture that I wanted to read to us. I've actually got my wrong Bible with me. I've got the Passion Translation, so it's only New Testament. But it's 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. And I'm going to try and quote it from memory, from what I can remember, because I just know that it's going to bless you. But it says to us that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They're not of flesh and bone. The weapons of our warfare are mighty and strong in the spirit for the pulling down of strongholds. So the way that we fight is not fleshly, it's not carnal, it's not the things of this world. We're not going to use the things of this world to fight what we are going through. It's a supernatural fight. It's a spiritual warfare. And we are going to align ourselves with the spirit. And when we begin to speak the name of Jesus, when we begin to worship as a church, there's such a heavy presence. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence with us. That you never leave us. You never forsake us, Father. You never forsake us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. That we can share your word. We can encourage each other. Thank you, Father, that the weapons that you've given us are not weak, but they are mighty in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, that as we worship together, as a church, you command a corporate blessing. And now I have my mascara running down my face. <laughs> that you command a blessing over us, Jesus, your church, your bride. And I thank you, Father God, that as we stand aligned with the Holy Spirit during this time, Father, that the corporate church around the world, whether it's the Netherlands, whether it's the UK, wherever you might be, let's speak the name of Jesus. Let's worship him. Sorry, I'm not getting emotional because I'm sad. This is what happens when the Holy Spirit comes upon me. Thank you, Father, that you are just speaking to us, ministering to us. Every person that's online, every person that's watching us. I thank you, Father, that we just release your anointing into their homes. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. Thank you for your power. Thank you that we as your church will rise up during this time and be the light. We will not be in fear because the weapons that you've given us are mighty. The weapons that you've given us are mighty in Christ. We will speak. We will sing. Worshippers, worship leaders, <clears throat> musicians. I believe that God is going to give us songs during this time. Songs of the spirit, not just songs of the flesh. There's going to come a new sound in the church. And I actually feel, I feel like it's going to be the sound of Israel. It's a new sound. A sound that's never been heard before. It's the sound of Israel rising. Thank you, Father God, for your presence. I just pray that you'll have a, a deeper revelation of Jesus today. That when you worship, it is warfare. <clears throat> that God is going to battle for you. So if you're in your homes, over your children, 
your families. I thank you, Father, that you are the one fighting for us and we can step into the realm of faith. I want to encourage you this week to step out of your feelings, out of your emotions, and step into the realm of faith. We're going to live by faith this week, church. We're not going to live by our feelings and our emotions. Yes, amen. I love your guys' comments. There's a new sound rising, amen. It's the sound of Israel. It's the sound of God's people being released. And you know where Israel was directed to, the promised land. So thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining us. We're going to do this more often because I believe there's a mandate on our church to speak about worship and what that looks like under grace. It is a finished work. We don't sing our songs. We don't uh, write our songs. We don't release our songs from before the cross. But we sing songs of hope and freedom because it is finished. Songs post the cross, after the cross. So I just want to encourage you, whether you're a musician, whether you're a singer, it doesn't matter. Lift up your worship. Step into the realm of faith. You know, the devil wants to distract us with many things. Um, and it just reminds me of that scripture that says that he is the accuser of the brethren. He accuses us night and day, day and night. He wants to accuse you and tell you that the situation is too overwhelming for you. He wants to accuse you and say that you're not good enough. He wants to accuse you and say that it's over for you. But God is our provision. God is our protection. Adonai. 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 Let's place him as Lord of all. Lord above everything. Lord of our lives. You know, when we received Jesus and when we were born again, we said, be Lord of my heart. We prayed that prayer and said, God, will you be the Lord of my life? Is he Lord of our lives today? Wow. And there's like the biggest storm coming down. <laughs> we just received the blessing, Father. Thank you. Um, so I just want to encourage you. Let's make him truly Lord of our lives. Adonai, when we begin to worship him, we step out of the realm of the natural and we step into the realm of faith. So I really just had that heavy on my heart today. This is the weapon that God has given us. Not only does worship act as a weapon, it activates the word. Worship and, and the word, it goes together. This book and worship is one. It activates the word and the word is God. So it activates God. When we begin to worship and declare his promises and his truth, it activates Jesus. It makes the promises and his truth come alive. And that goes to battle for us. That works for us in the midst of your circumstance. There's so many of you that are just commenting the most beautiful things. And it's actually bringing tears to my eyes because I think there's so many people um, that just need there's so many people that just need to be reminded about what we have in Jesus during this time I, I'm actually going to sign off soon this was meant to be just a quick 10 minute chat but I think it's really been just the word of the Lord for us in the season us worshippers um and I'm reminded of Zechariah 4, 6. And this is our word for the year from our pastors, Josh and Tara. Um, that it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by His Spirit. It's by the Spirit of the Lord. 
His Spirit is God with us. The Holy Spirit is God with us here on earth. And so the way that we are going to get through these times, these unprecedented times, is by the Spirit of the Lord. Our position is one of rest. Our posture is one of rest. In the Lord, in the finished work, because He is the one that is fighting for us. It's not by how skilled we are. It's not by how powerful we are. It's not by how clever we are to make money in this time. It's not how um, experienced we are in anything. It is simply by the Spirit of the Lord, just like the Spirit of the Lord led the, led the Israel children out of Egypt. So He is leading us right now. Every moment, every day, He's leading us, church. So I just want to encourage your heart today. Look up. Lift up your eyes. Every day, every morning. Lift up your eyes. Because that is where our help is going to come from. In this time. So I just want to pray a blessing over you. Over each and every person that is signed in, that is tuned in. Thank you, Father God, for your favor on us as your children. That this is time given to us to spend time with you, with our families. That you have placed us in a protected lockdown. That we are not hopeless. That we are not helpless. But God, you are ever present, even more than before. You are closer than you ever have been, Father. And we just thank you for your presence that is in our homes that your presence has gone ahead of us and prepared the way. You have already made an escape for us. You have already got the map, the plan. Father, and our position today is one of rest. Our posture is one of worship. Placing you as Adonai, Lord over all. Lord over all. You are our Lord. And you are the one that saves, not us. So we see you, Jesus, as our Savior. Our help comes from the Lord. And it is not by might. It is not by power. But Father, I declare that it is by your Spirit. So I pray a blessing. I pray protection, provision over every home, over every household. In the name of Jesus. And everyone online watching. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for enduring my tears and my emotions. But let's worship this week, church, together. For those of us who um, attend Redemption Church, we've got church on Sunday online. Worship with us online every single Sunday. And I just want to encourage you, keep sharing the word. Keep commenting. Keep sending in your testimonies. We want to hear what the Lord is doing. We love you. Bless you. I want to give a shout out to every person that is online, but there's just too many of you. But let's just speak his name this week. Amen.